Joining us is Michael Rubin, senior fellow at the American Enterprise Institute. He specializes in Iran, Turkey, and the Middle East and has lived frequently there. Laura Bloomfeld is uh, the senior uh, fellow at the Philip Merrill Center at Johns Hopkins University. She has previously covered the region for two decades as a reporter at the Washington Post. Uh, Mr. Rubin, let me begin with you, because you say something in something you wrote, I guess, for the AEI very recently that really caught my eye, and it goes as follows. Israel should be very worried about the Ford's deployment. That is the Gerald Ford uh, aircraft carrier, the nation's largest. Jerusalem should worry that the real reason for the naval presence might not be to dissuade Israel's enemies, but rather to dissuade Israel from launching a retaliation that could widen the war. You go on to say that targeted, indiscreet U.S. chatter monitored by Iranian or Turkish assets in Gaza Lebanon or Turkey-occupied northern Cy Cyprus would be enough to warn Iran of a potential strike and dissuade Israel from following through. This suggests rather darkly, rather deeply, that the U.S. may not be on Israel's side the way we present ourselves as being. Well, the best thing that the United States could do for Israel is to give them some space. Israelis used to talk about mowing the lawn, degrading Hamas from time to time, but after this last attack, they've got to uproot every, all the grass. What they can't have is the United States second-guessing them with a 7,000-mile screwdriver, which appears as what's happening. It's not clear what the Ford is doing beyond simply diplomatic and military virtue signaling. The United States might want to help with hostage rescues, but beyond that, Israel has the capabilities itself to do what it needs to do. It just needs to have the United States stand aside. Laura, do you agree with Michael's uh, premise here? Uh, I, I, I sense that you agree that Hamas must be ejected from, from uh, Gaza permanently. Uh, but do you agree that uh, perhaps the presence of the Gerald Ford carrier group is, is not what it appears to be? No, I think that the, the message coming out of the White House is clear. Uh, at this point, they're, not, they're saying no restraint. We're here to rearm you and we'll support you at the U.N., I think that they, they've got Israel's back, and that's unequivocal. Uh, I think that, it, in a word, this is all about deterrence, um, for Israel to deter a, a, the northern front opening up, but also for the U.S. to deter Russia and China. The world is watching. And that ship is, is sailing, I, I think it's actually within operational mm -hmm. striking distance. It's, it's in Cyprus now. It's not only speaking to Iran, it's speaking to powers beyond, who are watching with respect to China and Taiwan. Putin and Ukraine. This is a global crisis. Uh, Michael, you say we can't just mow the lawn in Gaza anymore, but uh, Hamas must be pulled up by root and shaft. How do you do that, and where do those individuals go if they're not killed? Well, you know, there's a precedent for uprooting groups like this. You had Black September in uh, 1970, where Jordan uprooted the PLO and sent them first to Lebanon and ultimately they were sent on to Tunisia. You had the Khmer Rouge in Cambodia, completely uprooted by the Vietnamese. What's clear is you can't allow Hamas to have a safe haven. It's going to be a multi-week operation. In the past, Hamas and Hezbollah have, have waited for the international community to force a ceasefire amidst growing civilian casualties. What we can't do is allow for a premature end to this operation to allow Hamas to survive.